Today we're going to talk about projects. One thing that wargamers are famous for is starting projects and not finishing them. How many of us have got a box or a cupboard or something like that, drawers, full of things that we've started but haven't finished? So how do we end up with these things? How do we end up turning into semi-hoarders as we try and collect armies and finish them? Very often you get a little bit of creep. So you start out with a good idea of what you want to do, or at least a vague idea of what you want to do, and you start going from there and what happens is you get caught up in something else. So you start with your Thousand Sons army because Wrath of Magnus has just come out and then you end up doing uh, an Ultramarines army because Gilliman gets released. Or you try starting uh, a new game, you get, you assemble something you paint a couple of models and then something else catches your eye. Wargamers are notorious for magpie behaviour. So you've got to think about ways around it. So one thing that a lot of people do is they collect small skirmish games because you can put together a small force quite quickly which helps keep you concentrated because you have a re realistic and achievable goal and you get there in a reasonable time scale. Because people get impatient. Uh, there's the gap between where you are and your goal and if you are trying to paint 2,000 points of orcs then you, you have to be really dedicated to get it done because it's a high model count army let's just loosen that up it's a high model count army where you're painting a lot of the same basic infantry which means you get bored and you end up drifting Something else catches your eye that seems easier to get done. Let's just get this open. These are the Australian Snipers, still available from GW via mail order, which will complete my kill team for Shadow War Armageddon. This is an example project. Eight models. I've started doing a test model. I've put some coats down to see how long it takes me to get one painted and to finalise my colour scheme. I'll go with an officer with a Las gun and sword, five troop, five veteran troopers with las guns, and as the campaign progresses, I'll upgrade them, and two snipers, which I'll give clip harnesses, and as soon as possible, red dot sights and toxic rounds. But it is eight models. That is a fairly achievable goal. I will finish assembling them tonight. I will probably undercoat them either tonight or tomorrow morning. And once that's done, I will start painting them. This is an army I'll be using in a store campaign, which will start in two weeks time. And that's another important point. If you have a deadline that you know you have to meet, 
it does tend to motivate you. So have a realistic goal and have a time scale to achieve that goal by. And if you do want to do something like paint a 2000 point orc force, then break it up. My 1000 points of Kakaradon Space Marines, I started as a 200 point kill team, then I got it to 500 points, then I got it to 750 points, and then I got it to 1000 points. I did it to play uh, Zone Mortalis at Warhammer World. I ended up only using kill teams, to be fair. Five, five. But uh, let's use this one. It meant I had a thousand points painted. My next step will be another squad of Terminators and the two squads of Scouts from Shadow War Armageddon. I'll then add another tactical squad, which I've already got to that. That'll take me to 1500. All infantry, all for things like Zone Mortalis, but it'll give me also another Shadow War team, a great variety for kill teams, and quite a bit of variety for making 1000 point forces. I can then just expand it with some vehicles for standard 40k play, uh, but I'll have a big choice for what to take in Zone Mortalis. But it's an achievable goal. If you're painting a 2000 point army, Start with a Shadow War kill team, or start with a kill team for 40k kill team, which will be 200 points. Then put together a combat patrol, 400-500 points, and go from there. One thing to do, decide on your colour scheme early and paint a test model to see what it actually looks like. The red on this guy's robe. I used a wet palette to do it. I used multiple thin coats followed by an ink wash followed by two highlight coats again using a wet palette very thin coats and it looks quite good it looks quite vibrant it's got some shadows to it it's a good solid not that time consuming paint job I've painted the chainmail on him I've painted the armour I've edged it with gold I've put the majority of colour on the rifle and again some gold highlights I've got some more armour to do the backpack, the hat and some more work on the boots and on the base but in a couple of nights work that'll be the test model done and I'll have all the recipes done for all the armour and I will go from there and there will only be another seven models to do if I want to expand the team further I'll have to mail order a few more of Australians or get them from eBay. But it's a realistic goal that I can get done in the next couple of weeks. And then I can play with them. Because the reason an awful lot of us are painting these models is to play with them in games. Uh, because people don't like sitting there playing bare plastic or bare metal. It looks a lot better on the tabletop if you've at least base coated them. So, you want to set specific goals that you know when you want to achieve them by, that are realistic, and that you know how you are progressing. If you break your 2000 point orc army up into a kill team of foot orcs, a kill team of bikes, uh, then a war boss and a couple of other characters, then your dreadnoughts or your killer cans, then suddenly you're at a thousand points and you've got a zone mortalis force and two kill teams and enough stuff for Shadow War Armageddon and it gives you options. Always look at these little milestones, the measurements you will use to determine what you've achieved. Don't focus on doing character models first. Get a unit done once you've done your test model because 
an awful lot of people will paint up one character and then they will lose impetus and they'll end up with a half finished army in a box somewhere that's another project that's been started and not finished and I know that is very much the danger with things like the triumvirates that GW have been releasing you buy them for the gigantic character model or all the character models and then you get one of those character models done and you start struggling on getting the infantry that goes with them done look at the size of games you want to play get what you need to to play those games done and then expand from there a lot of people are now using Belisarius Call in their 2000 point uh, Adeptus Mechanicus forces there's nothing wrong with that but if you're collecting Adeptus Mechanicus you probably want to start with a couple of squads of Skitari uh, a squad of Rust Stalkers uh, a squad of the Heavy Combat Servitors and then expand it out people focus an awful lot on the big ticket kits things like Magnus, things like Gilliman, things like the things like Archeon get a small force painted and put together first play some games, be sure you like the army and go from there so with this I've got one guy who is based and has some base coats on him these I'll assemble in a little bit metal models fairly straightforward I will grind these little bits of base tab left on off using a um, Dremel I'll then again use the Dremel to drill holes and pin them to these bases using actual pins once that's done, a quick undercoat, and I'm ready to start putting some base colours on. Even if I just block them out with red, brown, gold and silver, suddenly I've got a force that at least looks like an army on the table. And the models hang together and they've got common visual themes that people can see. Think about what you want to do. Write it down. As you are painting your test model and you are coming up with the recipes for the paint that you are putting down, write it down. Once you put together a kill team, put together a little bit of fluff for them. Because it acts to encourage you. Uh, I strongly believe in the benefit of painting in a group. Doing it as a group activity at the store. Or even uh, in your own home with a few friends or with your spouse or one of your children even if they're just reading a book next to you and you're chatting absent-mindedly don't do it all on your own because the things you do socially are the things that you are more likely to complete so to sum it up plan your projects what do you want to get out of it what will success look like? I know with this one, success is going to be a fully painted kill team for Shadow War Armageddon that I play some games with at my local store. The next project I'll go with after that will be painting the Shadow Armageddon terrain. And then painting the scouts of the orcs as a kill team. I may assemble them in the meantime to give me an opposition force or something to loan out. the base tab off this, this is actually going to be a bit of a pain but Shadow War Armageddon is a very good choice for testing if you want to start collecting something Tyranid Army, one box, three warriors this is a box of metal troops that I've had lying around for years like six or seven years and I picked up a blister of snipers 
to give me the special weapons that I wanted. A Vostroyan army in total would be too expensive and too time consuming for me to put together. A kill team. Kill team is absolutely fine. I can probably knock that out in a week or two. Which will be my goal. To get this completed towards the end of April and on the table. I'll save one model and I'll do a detailed uh, painting tutorial for Vostroyans. Again, as part of the goals for this project, because having had a look, there was nothing that was jumping out at me as a very good painting tutorial for them. But it's a small and achievable project. It's the sort of project that will get done in a short time scale and then I can move on to something else. But I'll have a little painted force to play the game that I want to play with it. And it'll be something that I can put on the shelf and come back to. And I'm not going to have to do again and it isn't unfinished. So, if you have enjoyed this, leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment below. What projects have you been working on? What projects have you got part way through and then stopped? Uh, have you accidentally turned into a bit of a wargaming hoarder? What do you do to help motivate you? Uh, what's a project that you want to get completed but you've been struggling with? Leave a comment, have a chat.